Hey everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to yet another God of War video. With us coming off our exploration of Norse mythology's gods and monsters, as well as the origin of the goddess Freya, both highly recommend you check out those videos, shameless plug. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another member of Odin's broken family, and Thor's half-brother, Asgard's fallen god of war, Tyr. Also, if possible, just before we start, Let's try getting this video to about 500 likes, as honestly, it's a fantastic way of helping the channel, and also does give this video that extra push right out the gate. And if you like what we do here, wish to see more, don't forget to subscribe and tick that bell, as it will keep you up to date with all of the content we do have coming out here. But before we do get a start, we do actually have a sponsor for today's video, HelloFresh. Now for those of you unfamiliar with HelloFresh, they are a unique pre-portion delivery service that brings incredible meals right to your doorstep, hence why they are America's number one meal kit service. And it's a no-brainer as to see why this is the case. With a diverse menu and catalogue of meals, ranging from chicken ramen and shoyu style broth, to Pillsbury pumpkin cookies, to turkey ragu gnocchi, there is plenty to pick from. And hey, if you got a specific diet in mind, they have you there too, as they have calorie smart, pescatarian and vegetarian options for you to choose from. The real beauty that comes with HelloFresh is that you never really have to have the same meal twice. With 50 menu and market items to choose from, you can never really get bored with the amount of variety at your fingertips, as well you can have something different every single time. My personal favourite part about this is, is that all of the ingredients they give you is fresh and well proportioned, so there is no excess ingredients that goes to waste. The meals are quick and easy to put together, and it's a simple step-by-step -step process that will take 20 to 40 minutes, depending on what you're putting together. Honestly, stuff like this is a godsend. As someone who runs a type ship here on the channel, being its script writer, voice, and editor, it means that meal prepping can be a real hassle, but HelloFresh does all of the heavy lifting when it comes to me sorting out my meals. With easy to follow recipes and instructions, I get more time in the day to unwind and relax as we close into the winter season with friends and family. This all comes at a discounted price, as HelloFresh meals and ingredients are 30% less than what you get at the grocery store. So, if you're interested, then I'm very happy to let you know that I've teamed up with HelloFresh to bring you 14 free meals and free free gifts if you sign up to them and use my special exclusive code HBTW14. Use that and I guarantee you, you will not regret it. So once again guys, that HBTW14 down in the description below. Click on that and it will send you over. But without any further ado, let's get back to the video. Now amongst the Aesir gods of Asgard, Tyr was a very interesting being. Being a son of Odin and Asgard's god of war, Tyr was expected to be the most bloodthirsty of all of them, but instead he proved to be quite the opposite in every sense of the word. Unlike the previous god of wars we have met in the series, Tyr was more of a pacifist with his approach to godhood. Instead of waging wars and drenching the battlefields in blood, he sought out to unite the people and gods of every realm and every land. So, he was far different from what you would expect from a typical god of war. And because of this, Tyr's presence in Asgard actually rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. He didn't embody that ferocity or fighting spirit that the Aesir gods were known for, and in a way because of this, he was seen as an outcast by them. With that being said, however, none would dare lay a finger on the son of Odin. But it seems like Tyr here actually didn't care, as he was not interested in the affairs of the Aesir gods, or even his father. Instead, he turned his sights to other lands, wishing to unite them all under one banner. Tyr's travels transcended beyond the plain of the Asgardian pantheon, having gone out to meet the pantheons of Greece, Japan, Egypt, the Celts, and the Mayans, Tyr travelled to nearly every corner of every land to unite them under his banner of peace. Tyr was celebrated throughout the lands beyond Asgard as a beacon of peace and hope. Thus, in turn, he was gifted artifacts of each land 
to honour their peace and relationship, something he would hold dear deep beneath his vault. Once he united the lands and even the Nine Realms, with Tyr's guidance and knowledge, the Nine Realms came together and they would forge a bridge that any and all could use to transverse freely from realm to realm. Of course, this is the creation of the Bifrost Bridge. Whilst yes, it was a long and painful task, it was something that Tyr was extremely proud of, as this allowed any god or mortal to travel from realm to realm in a matter of seconds. The peace that Tyr ushered in was unlike anything anyone had seen before. His kindness was felt throughout the lands, and even earned him the trust of the Aesir's long-sworn enemies, the Jotuns. Respecting their ideas, cultures, and traditions, Tyr was able to forge a very unique relationship with the Jotuns, one that allowed him to learn of their customs and their way of life. After spending a lot of time with the giants, Tyr wished to find a way to finally broker peace between his family and the giants. Now, as expected, this caused quite a stir in Asgard, with many eyes being placed on the Odinson and branding him as a traitor. But where others saw betrayal, the old father saw opportunity. Odin decided that going forth, he would keep a very close eye on Tyr. Not just because he didn't trust him, but he believed he could use his son as a conduit to learn of the Jotun's abilities to look into the future. As you see, around the time Tyr started to unite the realms, Odin had begun to slip into madness. His infatuation with Ragnarok had eclipsed his being, so Odin would allow his son to somewhat play with the Frost Giants, till he could take advantage of the situation. So Odin at this point would bind his time, till an opportunity presented itself, and that it did. One day, Tyr would order a summit between Odin and the giants in Jotunheim, hoping that he would be the one to broker peace between both sides, much like how Mimir was able to unite the Vanir and Aesir gods. The summit seems to have been a success for the most part, but it's here where Odin plays his hand. If the All Father couldn't obtain the ability of clairvoyance, then he would attempt to steal it from the Jotuns. But the giants long knew about Odin's greed, and thus transported him back to Asgard the second he played his hand. But what happened next is something I doubt any of them could have foreseen. Lost in a blind rage, Odin would command his son Thor to lead a bloody massacre against the Jotuns of Midgard. Many fell during that terrible day. But what happened to Tyr? Well, having seen the onslaught that took place, Tyr would try his best to save all of the frost giants he could even asking help from their guardian, Laufey, or Laufey, or Fey from the 2018 game. Together, they tried their best to save everyone, but in the end, the damage that Mjolnir rippled throughout the land was far too great. So the giants of Midgard fell before the Odinson, and Tyr would be guilt-ridden, placing the blame upon himself as he felt like he should have known better. To redeem himself, Tyr would do everything in his power to save the remaining giants of Jotunheim. So, with the help of Fey, Tyr was able to take the Jotunheim gate of the Bifrost and hide it from all to see. Tyr had found a space between the branches of Yggdrasil to seal the gate from any that might seek to hunt the Jotuns. He would then seal it away with the Unity Stone and hide it deep within his temple. So, none for a very long time were able to unravel the lock. This was Tyr's last and final defiant act towards Odin, before he was eventually captured by the Aesir and the Allfather. To punish his son, Odin would imprison him in an undisclosed location, in the hopes that he would be lost to time. The Raven King would even go so far as spreading rumours of his son's demise to strike fear into those that may oppose him. And this was a message that all heard well across the Nine Realms, and even beyond as many missed the god of war and his gestures of kindness. Unfortunately, this would be the last time that anyone heard of Tyr, as many suspected him to be dead. But of course, this was not truly the end of the Asgardian god of war. In the God of War Ragnarok trailer, we finally get our first glimpse at Tyr, and Dear Lord is he tall. It seems like after a century, Tyr has finally been released from his chambers with the assistance of Kratos and Atreus, as the two themselves are looking for answers about Ragnarok, their part in the prophecy, and who is Loki. Along with this, it's also worth pointing out that Tyr still retains both of his hands 
Norse. If you are familiar with Norse mythology, then you know for a fact that this brings into question how things are going to unfold between him and the giant wolf Fenrir. As we know that the Great Wolf does exist in the current timeline, but is displaced. So it raises a lot of questions with how things can unfold in God of War Ragnarok. But until then, this is going to be it for everything regarding what happened to Tyr. Now, there's absolutely no denying Tyr's overall and large impact on the universe. And I don't strictly mean that for what he did for the giants of Jotunheim, or even the Nine Realms. Tyr's inclusion and expansive exploration of worlds serves as a catalyst for stories and journeys beyond the Norse mythos, with Ragnarok said to be the climax of these series of games. Tia's adventures serve as a bridge that will allow Kratos and maybe even Atreus to venture off into. We could see them explore the likes of Egypt, Japan, and so, so much more. The possibilities are honestly endless. I'm just waiting for the day that we inevitably see Kratos punch Jesus in the mouth. Needless to say, I'm very, very excited to see what comes next. But first things first, what role is the Aesir God of War going to play in the coming battle, and will he survive? the oncoming storm, as Asgard's time in the hourglass is slowly ticking down. But for now, that has been it for me. So as always everyone, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting as Ragnarok comes for us all. Take care everyone, stay safe.